In this video, I want to show you something that's very common in financial reporting, and that is to add superscript numbers to create footnotes in the financial report. Whether it's a table of numbers, whether it's a graph, footnotes are very important because what they do is, is they give the viewer context or additional information for that either one number or column of numbers. So how can we do that in Excel? Well, if you have a text string like we do here, in the formula bar, you can simply like highlight that number that you want to be superscript. And in the font section of the home ribbon, click on the expand button to go to all the settings. And here we have superscript. We just check that box, click OK. And you'll notice the display in the cell shows it. We just hit enter and it keeps our superscript. So that's how we can add the number very easily. Now, if you do it in a cell which actually has a number, not text, it doesn't work the same way. So I'm going to highlight the last number, for example, use my same technique here, go to superscript, click OK. It looks like the, the cell is going to take it, but when I hit enter, it goes away because Excel knows this is a number. It's not text. So it has to remain as a number, not using superscript. So how do we actually add superscript more flexibly within Excel, what we can do is we can use functions. And here are the different superscript numbers, one through nine, and the functions you need to use. So some use the car character function, and some use the Unicode character, or Unicar function. And here you see some examples of those superscript numbers being added to this text. So uh, let me show you some examples of how we use these functions within typical things that we do in Excel. So let's first take a look at a table of cells here. In our title here in C6, I want that to have a superscript. So what I've done, take a look at the formula here, is I've used the concatenate character, the ampersand, to concatenate the text year-over-year -year percentage with car 185, which is the function for the superscript number one. And so when you're using a text cell, that works really well. As we already know, if I wanted a superscript for a number, it's a cell that has a number I can't add that. So what you would do is you would use that function, let's say in the cell just to the right of it, add that function in there, make it left aligned in the uh, alignment in the home ribbon, and it would put the number right beside, the superscript number right beside the number that you wanted. It's not ideal. You may have to add another column if you're if you're doing this, make it very narrow just to hold the superscripts, but it certainly can be done. Once you add a superscript up in the table, you have to now add the footnote. So the footnote is usually put below all of the rows of the table. And this is an example here. And what we've done is very similarly, we've used the function car185, the concatenate, and then added a space before the words based on local currency so that what shows up, the one is separated, it stands out, and it's easy for the viewer to see, ah, yes, this is the footnote. So that's how we can do it for a table of cells. We look at a chart, we can do the same sort of thing. So here I've done the series name with that concatenate with the Carwin 85. And what Excel does often is if you only have one data series and you have a series name, it uses that default as the chart title. Now, if you've typed the chart title in, you've actually typed the letters in, you can use the same technique I showed you at the start to highlight one of those letters, use the additional font settings to take it and turn it to be a superscript. The uh, the other thing you can do is, is you can, uh, and we're going to see this in a second, is use a formula as the title. And what we, the example here I want to show you is where we've actually added the footnote into the chart. So the footnote in the chart is done, and you see my cursor is over it, horizontal axis title. So this is the horizontal axis title in the chart skittle. I've, you can see I've added the horizontal axis title. Now, normally it sits in the middle right below our axis labels here. But what I've done is, is two things. First of all, I clicked on it and then I, in the formula bar, I said equals and then I clicked on this cell right here, 
B26, and that's why you see it says B26 in the formula bar. So the, the contents of this access title will always be taken from cell B26. This gives you a lot of flexibility because if the footnote changes next reporting period, just put in the new text and the footnote in the graph automatically updates. Then what I did is I took that title and I just dragged it and moved it down to the lower left hand corner. Now it doesn't look so much like a title for the axis labels, it looks like truly a footnote. So when you want to do it in chart title, that's one of the ways to do it, a couple of uh, tips there to make it more flexible. Now what if we wanted to do it in a data label? So it's not that all of the values are uh, needing a footnote, so we don't need it in the title, it's just the one value here for Europe. How do we do that? Well. We know that we can't do it by adding a, a one to this cell. So what we have to do is we have to use a feature that was introduced in Excel 2013. It allows us to add data labels from a different set of cells. So in column D here, what I've done is I have created a set of labels that I'm gonna use for my bars. And you'll notice our second one here. What I do is I use the text function to format our value in B41 using percentage number formatting. And this is the typical number formatting we use in Excel. And then I added my footnote using that character 185 function. So just this label has that footnote. Then in my data labels, so if I go to the data labels and more options here, so you can see the task pane, you'll notice it says value from cells and the range selected is that range that I've created. So what that's doing is, is the data labels that it's putting outside the bars, it is getting from this set of cells. And because these cells are text strings, we can then have that superscript number to refer to the footnote. The footnote here, um, I just wanted to show you something different. This is not a label for an axis. It is actually a text box. And just like I did for the previous example where I had the horizontal axis label pointing to a particular cell, you'll notice here again what I did for this text box is I pointed it to the cell that contains, B46, that contains the text, the function, and then the text. The thing with the text box is, using it, I find the text box is less flexible. When you resize the chart, You'll notice it does not actually move. It does not uh, move the, the text box up so you can see all the text. That's one of the disadvantages of a text box. But I did want to show it to you in case you wanted to choose to use that particular option. So when in your financial reporting, you have to add footnotes to either a table of cells or to charts in Excel, use superscript numbers to add that superscript number to the title or the individual value, and then use one of the techniques to add that footnote down below either the table or as part of the chart so that the viewer knows what that footnote refers to. If you found this video helpful, there are three things you can do to help me out. First, click the like button below the video on YouTube. Second, leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And third, subscribe to my channel. Check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice. Thanks again for watching.